Hello, this is Nils. In this video, I'll be talking about the dangers of stem cell collapse and some ways that we may be able to prevent it. Nothing in this video is intended as or should be taken as medical advice. As we age, our stem cell populations begin to decline, leading to an eventual collapse. The process accelerates in our mid-60s and early 70s and appears to be one of the key drivers of aging. As the Harvard Stem Cell Institute put it, a progressive decline in stem cell frequency and function may contribute to the conditions related to aging. If we're serious about extending the human lifespan, in my opinion, we need to get serious about promoting stem cell differentiation and proliferation. According to an article published in The Guardian, when researchers at Cambridge studied blood cells across the age range from newborns to people in their 80s, they found that adults under 65 had a wide range of red and white blood cells produced by a diverse population of 20,000 to 200,000 different types of stem cells in their bone marrow. In over 65s, about half of their blood cells came from a measly 10 or 20 distinct stem cells, dramatically reducing the diversity of the person's blood cells with consequences for their health, which in turn made people less resilient to infections and medical treatments such as chemotherapy. So we're dropping from having as high as 200,000 types of stem cells to as low as 10 types in those five years. A dramatic example of how quickly stem cell collapse can occur. I find this a little irksome because I'm 71 years old. I don't know how many lines I have left, but I intend to not lose any more as the years go by. Fortunately, there are things that can push back against the loss of stem cell lines. They include, number one, vigorous physical exercise. Not once or twice, but regularly. Exercise has been found to improve the regenerative capacity of mesenchymal stem cells and to increase their growth, proliferation, and differentiation. Number two, temperature extremes. In one study, a significant increase in the number of stem cells in the body was observed when cells were treated with mild heat shock at 41 degrees centigrade or 104 degrees Fahrenheit for 60 minutes once a week. The cells that were treated with heat shock achieved 36 to 39 doublings, while the cells in the control group achieved only 26 or 27. Temperatures below and above the standard culture temperature for stem cells have been shown to prevent or reverse aging and age-related impairment in the cells and significantly impact their regenerative potential. Number three, low oxygen or hypoxia. Hypoxia is a temporary deficiency in the amount of oxygen reaching our tissues. One way to achieve this state safely is with intense physical exercise. As a recent study put it, hypoxia significantly improves survival, stemness, and proliferation of mesenchymal stem cells derived from adipose tissue and bone marrow. Collectively, these studies indicate that hypoxic insult increases the self-renewal potential of stem cells. We obviously need oxygen, we would die without it, but our stem cells can benefit from low oxygen intervals too. Number four, keeping sugars and calories low. Elevated levels of glucose are associated with reduced mobilization, proliferation, homing and repair potential. Stem cells from diabetic patients exhibited reduced yield, viability, proliferation, differentiation, and wound healing ability. As our blood sugar goes up, our stem cell populations go down, not just temporarily in response to the spike in blood sugar, but permanently. The foods that we eat daily can either damage or support our stem cell populations. Foods that are beneficial include sea buckthorn berries. 
Seabuck thornberries directly support stem cell proliferation and differentiation of both progenitor and epithelial stem cells. Number two, dark chocolate. 79 to 80% cacao or higher. A study at California State Polytechnic University found that a dark cocoa extract increased capillary density in mice after just two weeks of treatment and that this occurred because of a boost in stem cell production leading to an enhanced ability for the tissues to repair themselves. Olives and olive oil and other foods such as avocado rich in oleic acid promote mesenchymal stem cell differentiation and proliferation. The most effective olive oil extracts were from Pakul olives, which increased proliferation by 18 to 22%. Taking glucosamine supplements activates AMPK, the longevity pathway, and supports stem cell proliferation. People have been taking glucosamine for decades in the hopes of relieving joint pain. I remember it's being advertised and I started actually taking it for a short time way back in the 1970s. Some people have been taking it since then, so there's been ample time to notice its effects on lifespan. Two unexpected benefits of taking it have turned out to be lower all-cause mortality and greater stem cell production. Taking vitamin C and vitamin D3 and drinking moringa flower tea have similar benefits. The things that I'm doing to support my stem cells include number one, eating a diet low in both calories and carbohydrates to keep my blood sugar down. Number two, doing occasional three to five day water fasts or fasting mimicking diets. Like other interventions, fasting can have side effects. If you do a prolonged fast, fasting mimicking diets appears to be a better and safer approach than a water fast. Number three, taking saunas and hot baths. I try to do both regularly. I like baths that are hot enough that I am literally pouring with sweat in the bathtub. Number four, working out vigorously to a point that I'm seriously out of breath to establish some hypoxia. Number five, eating small amounts of very dark chocolate, which is also, of course, very low in sugar to support the production of endothelial cells. Number six, eating sea buckthorn berry powder. I like taking it in a little bit of yogurt in the morning. Number seven, eating a diet rich in vitamin D3 vitamin C, and other essential nutrients to provide the compounds needed by the body to support stem cell regeneration. Number eight, eating olives and cooking with olive and avocado oils, both of which are high in oleic acid. Number nine, taking supplements such as berberine and benfotiamine to keep my blood sugar low. And number 10, taking NMN, which has also been found independently to support stem cell regeneration. The videos on this channel are sponsored by Do Not Age. I'm currently taking their NMN, NR, glycine with NAC, calcium AKG, fish oil, hyaluronic acid, certisase activator, and several other of their supplements. For a 10% discount on all of their products, use the discount code PATHWAYS, being sure to type it in all caps. So to wrap up this video, I'm going to play you a little song that I wrote about how to support our stem cells. I wrote the lyrics for this, and then the music was created in Suno. Our stem cells keep us flying high We lose them as the years go by The aging process is a swindle Our stem cell populations dwindle To live forever, help protect them Do things to heal and resurrect them Be chocolate and sea but thorn berries Cut back on sugars, even cherries Get out of breath, don't do some running And working out, cut back on sunning No one 
Fox Virgin is beneficial But benefits are now official And when it's time to graduate Hot baths and saunas activate Your heat shock proteins take cold showers Drink tea made from Moringa flowers Take supplements, the ones I need are CD and glucosamine and NMN And do some fasting, the benefits are everlasting To live forever, help protect them Do things to heal and resurrect them Eat chocolate and sea buck for berries Cut back on sugars, even cherries But when it's time to graduate Hot baths and saunas activate Your heat shock proteins take cold showers Drink tea made from Moringa flowers Take supplements, the ones I need are CD and glucosamine and NMN and do some fasting The benefits are everlasting Take care and I'll see you in the next video.